seven. Kadeh was unusual. Rama visited. Uh, that wasn't unusual. Though his demeanor was rather tender. However, Yao and Chomu also visited. Yao did most of the talking. Odd, as Chomu's keen on speaking for himself. Yao explained that Chomu had experienced hallucinations. I asked him to elaborate. Frequency, locations, etc. Arama made to leave, perhaps out of politeness, but Chomo told him to stay. He said it's better we're all made aware. He didn't go into much detail. His visions were of a deceased friend, and they only occurred in the lower mind. Arama pressed him about the other crew members, but Chomo claimed that none had voiced similar experiences. He originally chalked any behavioral discrepancies up to stress, but he realized too late that it may be something more. Chomu's accounts seem credible, if not a bit slow, and there are another data point supporting mine and Tiny's theory. Something unbelievable just happened! Chomu visited again! Once certainly we were alone, he began frantically rambling! He admitted that he'd left out details about his hallucinations because Yao was present! Early on, Cholmu had worked on the forefront of the excavation. Alone one night, he heard someone run up behind him. Before he knew it, he was face down. He could hear the attacker hissing while backing his head into the ground. Nearly unconscious, Cholmu felt the attacker start chewing his leg. He suspects it may have been trying to eat him. With the strength he had left, he cast off the attacker. He sat up to see one of his captains, blood staining her mouth. Their struggle continued, edging closer to a mine shaft. To keep them from falling, Kalu tried to land her backward. But in that moment, she lunged. Instead of hitting him, she flew over his back, free falling to the bottom of the mine. He was so shocked, he couldn't process it. His crew assumed the captain quit, as she'd recently been acting agitated. That's when his delusions began. He made me swear not to tell Yao, who'd known the captain. But I had to tell someone. Case note, entry nine. I have a confession. Despite Chomu swearing me to secrecy, I couldn't keep his story to myself. I paid Tiny another visit and spilled everything. She was shocked, to say the least, but she was glad I confided in her. She echoed Chomu's request not to tell Yao. There's no use upsetting them. I couldn't bring myself to do so anyway. Still, I feel better getting it off my back. And as Tiny pointed out, if I was stressed, imagine how Chomu feel. Between the guilt and the cruelty inherent in these delusions, it put his behavior into perspective. While I was there, Tiny showed me something exciting. A prototype for a device that she, Jun, and Yao are working on. It's designed to control the stress response that the demon seems to feast on, then channel that power back at it. It's based on my research findings, paired with Yao and Jun's jade tech knowledge and tiny everything knowledge. We just might have a solution to our demon problem. Case notes, entry 10. This is it! We've done it! Thank the alchemy! Tiny asked me to stop by as soon as possible. When I arrived, she, Yao, and Jun were putting the final touches on their newest invention! It boasts several features, not to mention a sleek design. I can't wait till the commander sees, though I need to keep reminding myself to treat them with sensitivity. The commander's role in our plan will likely be the toughest and most psychologically draining. I'm on pins and needles for the adventure's debut. Demon, here we come. Goric, out.
Michael Bob Adventure Tours. Adding a little excitement to your family vacation. We are all wizarding. Commander, hi! You look refreshed and so lucid. I hear you've been busy. Certainly looks that way. And for good reason. Finn, please show the Commander our latest masterpiece. Just like we practice. Introducing... The Recollector! Ta-da! demon took a liking to you. After further analysis, it's clear why. It preys on unresolved stress, vulnerability. Not that anyone is doubting your strength, but you've been known to carry the weight of the world. And that's tough for anyone, even if they are you. Luckily, we can use that to our advantage. If you gather your emotions with the Recollector, we can use them as a lure. Right. When our demon senses potent emotions, it'll try to latch on. Once enticed, we can lure it from the ley line like tasty emotional breadcrumbs. So your plan is to make me into bait? How do I collect these emotional breadcrumbs? You'll have to do some exploration, physically and emotionally. Places important to you should give strong responses. I know it's a lot, but well, we'll be there to help. And it'll be great prep for protecting your mind against further attacks. You'll have to forgive my lack of enthusiasm for all this. But I'll do what needs to be done. Rare and valuable. Hey, Commander. So, Kaineng, huh? Uh, at least it's convenient. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I don't mean to pry. I just... Hey, at any point, if you get worked up, I'm here. Dealing with this stuff is hard. Most people won't even try. Uh, for what it's worth, I think it's pretty damn brave to do this. And yeah, I'll be here. That's all. Thank you, Yao. Suppose I should get started.
said that. I can't change who I was, but I won't give up on who I want to be. And who, pray tell, is that? I don't know. Someone better. Hey, how are you feeling? My Trin was selfish. Killed innocent people without a second thought. And I owe my life to her. I didn't know her well. Our first real introduction was terrible. But I did get the impression she felt lost. Finding your place can be tough. She probably thought the Aether Blades were where she belonged. But then she hit a point where she realized what she was doing didn't align with the person she wanted to be. And she started thinking less about being accepted by pirates and more about being acceptable to herself. Doesn't excuse her actions. Not one bit. Gods, no. She murdered people. Maybe just acknowledge that she tried to do something right at the end. Not everybody does. done until the last corrupted freak is dead. Yao told me about... Uh, about how you'd be up this way. Interesting place. Well, I'll get to it then. Sure. Do what you have to do. up in the Farrar together. He bailed us out more times than I can count. He's always trying to do what's right. That's why he's got our loyalty. reputation. We intend on keeping it.
speak. Save it. I've learned plenty. Seen and done plenty. Old heads aren't the only ones fit to lead. Get to the point already. Charge! You look... shaken up. I'm... tired. Look, you're gonna screw something up for someone. That's just how it goes. Cinder is dead because I let the parlay happen. You didn't kill Cinder. Smoder did. All you can do is look out for those counting on you and choose what you believe is right. Cinder was... on the wrong side. Same with all those researchers. But they didn't deserve... Everyone thinks leading's easy. But it's not black and white. And if things go south and people get hurt, it's all on you. People look at you like you don't care. When really, it eats at you. But you can't show them. You have to be strong. But they're right. Someone got hurt, or worse, because of you. No matter how good you are at what you do, it happens. I know. It gets to you. Just find your own way to deal with it. Just reading through some of Blish's old papers, his professors always kept copies of his work as examples for future students. Wow. He must have been at the top of his classes. Academic competition was fierce, especially in cybernetic systems, too. The results of that course are highly contested. Whatever you do, don't bring it up to Tiny. It's a lingering sore spot for her. Noted. Mind if I have a look? Not at all. Blish would have been thrilled people still read his work. I'd recommend his Consciousness Transferals papers. Though his newest work was some of his most riveting. He was prepping it for publication, but he ran out of time. Hey, take care, Rourke. Tell him. Tell him his big brother is sorry. And. Tiny, too. And. Stop keeping secrets from each other. All of you. Come back to me when the storm passes. We've come too far to give in now. Embrace simplicity. Commander, I knew from the moment you told me what this was going to be about. I wanted to be here with you. When I was with him, I had no idea he was planning. I'm sorry. You would have been so proud of what we accomplished, and that you still remember him. Gorik. It took me a while to accept that his sacrifice was necessary. 
And it was his choice. How interesting. We have to honor that. It's okay. I think I'm ready now. Should probably get back to the mine.
compact is sworn.
Why you don't mess with the Brotherhood or our associates. Thanks for the help. You're back! Thank the alchemy! You're okay. You still have the Recollector, right? It didn't explode, or...? I'm fine. The Recollector's fine. Though I should probably test out its other functions. Oh, yeah, right. Of course. But don't think you're walking into that gunk unprotected. Say hello to an old friend. An old friend who can withstand the elements. You're lending me Scruffy? He's roomier than he looks. Why don't you take him out for a spin?
Won't anyone help me? <laughs> How's the fit? Very. A surprising amount of headroom. Perfect! Let's get some practice in. What's the situation? Any potential test subjects lurking around? There's a bunch near some jade pools. Beautiful. Obliterate them! Or, you know, test out the non-lethal features. They're important too, but so much less fun. In yourself? I'll admit, it's cathartic. That's the idea. Sounds like everything's working as it should. Yes, but the effects seem to be wearing off pretty fast. I'm concerned it won't buy us much time. What? Oh, those greedy emotion grubbers. And these are just the wimpy ones. Oh, bring it back. Everyone's here now, so we can <sighs> troubleshoot. I don't believe this. At this point, we don't have the resources to compete with their appetites. Yeah, by the time we lure the big guy to the surface, all those little ones will be tailing us. Especially when they get away from the commander. No offense. What if we blocked the path as we go? Could Finn knock out some more walls? Bury them in debris? Only where there's structural weakness. Those walls now, are this solid. Is a fine. Even if we had something with more pizzazz, I'm not sure how safe it'd be. Before you go blowing up the place, take a look through my storage crates. I brought a few extra supplies with me from headquarters. I'm sure there's something useful in there. Quite a reward. Seriously? Y you brought a telescope to a mine? To... to what, stargaze underground? Astronomy has always been a prized hobby of Cantha's great minds. Property of Minister Nguyen, Ministry of Urban Planning. I don't know what you're talking about.
What is that? Why is it in my storage? Well, we don't need that. All yours, Chilmu. Is that from the day we broke into... Uh, never mind. Must have it confused with some other day. Some other really fun day. Why the Brotherhood has an ancient Kurzik rune in its possession? It was acquired from the speakers. Apparently, Tetra found it useful. And it's in our best interest to keep useful things away from Tetra. Of course. Of course. I mean, why return it to its rightful owners when we can shove it in a damn crate? Get off your soapbox. You may borrow it. Park Cholmu, a true philanthropist. Considering that it's now Brotherhood property, I believe I'm being quite generous. And I believe that you believe that. <laughs> 